أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم اما بعد سورة الغاشية اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل اتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تسلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام الا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع صدق الله العظيم has there come to you the story of the enveloper the overwhelming rashiya the day you know which will cover all mankind the day of resurrection wujuh yawm ayzin khashiya many faces on that day shall be downcast عاملت ناصبة laboring and tired exhausted تسلى نارا حامية entering into the scorching fire تسقى من عين آنية made to drink from a boiling fountain a fountain of boiling water ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضرير They will have no food except bitter thorns. لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع. Neither nourishing nor satisfying the hunger. وجوه يوم يزين نعيما. On the contrary, many faces on that day shall be delighted. نسعى يها راضية. They will be very much pleased. With the results of their endeavors, when they will see the result that they are going to get for whatever the they did in the past life, they will be pleased with it. Fi jannatin aliyah in a very high garden, la tasmau fiha laghiya. They will not hear there even any vain talk. A cultured person doesn't like to even listen to gossips and vain talks. Fiha ainun jariya. In that there is a flowing fountain. Fiha sorunum parfua. There are raised couches. Vakwabu mauzua and goblets arranged in order. Vanamare ko masfufa. And cushions set in rows. Was Arabi yom of Susa, and carpets spread out. Afala yanzuruna ilal ibili kaifa kholiqat. So, do they not look at the camels? How they are created? All these creations are signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And for the Arabs, you know, these four things. They were mostly before their eyes. They kept travelling, and when they travelled, they used to be on the horses, on the backs of the camels. Under them is the earth, over them the sky, and to right or left of them the mountains, because the Hejaz, you know, is a mountainous country. So the journey used to be in the valleys. Valley is between two mountains. To the right of them mountain, to the left of them mountain. So these four things especially they are mentioned here. Afala yanzuruna ilal ibile kaifa khulaqat. So do they not look at the camel? How they are created? How they are fitting with the environment? 
their bodies, their physiology, absolutely suits the environment in which it has to live. While the sama for ofat and to the heaven, how it is raised high. While the jibal ikayfan usibat and to the mountains to their left and right, how they have been fixed. While the lungs ikayfan sukihat and to the earth beneath them, how it has been spread out. Fazakir in nama anta muzakir. So Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you go on admonishing them, reminding them, inviting them to see all these signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala. These signs are everywhere in the universe, wafi an fusikum, and even within yourselves. Fazakir. So you go on reminding them, go on admonishing them. Lasta alaihim bi musayatir. You are not. A warder over them. You are not responsible for them. Your function is to convey the message and to admonish them. Now, this point I think must be cleared that the two levels are different. At the individual level, no man has ever been compelled to accept Islam. And will never be compelled to accept Islam. Like Rahafiddin, Qab Tabayyan Rushtu Min Al Ghayy. Individuals, this is the rule. But the system, for that, the rule is absolutely converse. If the believers have power, and they let the system of falsehood remain. Then they are not loyal to the truth. If they have power, they have to uproot the wrong system and establish the deen of Allah, which is the just system of life. If don't, they don't have power, okay, then they have to continue the effort to get that power. The dawa, the training, the organization, all that. What for? So that you have that power, you have that strength with which you can change the system. So, for changing the system, power has to be used, and we shall apply coercion. If we have power, we shall use it, but not for compelling any individual to accept Islam as a mazhab. For zakir in nama anta muzakir. So you go on reminding them and admonishing them. Just the alayhim be musaytir. You are not a warder over them. Illa man tawalla wa kafar. But whosoever turns back and disbelieves, for you azabu Allahul azab al akbar, then Allah will chastise him with the greatest chastisement. Why greatest? Because Muhammad is the greatest scholar towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He is the greatest prophet of Allah, greatest messenger of Allah. Quran is the last and the greatest word of Allah. Now, even if all these things they don't believe. So they deserve the greatest punishment. Inna ilayna yabahum verily, to us is their return. They can't go anywhere else. They have to come to us. Summa inna ilayna hisabahum. Then on us, upon us, is their accounting and reckoning. It is our duty to tell them this is your account. This is the credit. This is the discredit. Here also you saw fazakir in nama anta muzakir, and because the sermon of Juma is for tazkir, there is a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah. Kana lil Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam khutbatan. For the Prophet there were two khutbas, just as we have today. All the Imams, Khatibs, two khutbas, they sit in between them. Yadli subayna huma used to sit. And for some time between the two, Kana yakra wa ayati min al Quran wa yuzak kirun nas. And this was the subject of khutbah that he used to recite the ayat of Quran and remind people. So this sermon of Juma is actually to remind people. And as I explained when we were reading Surah Al Juma, actually this is the weekly meeting. 
of Hezbollah, the party of Allah, which is to strive to establish the deen of Allah on earth. And for that purpose, they must keep fresh in their minds the ideology of Islam. If this ideology becomes dim, then you know the, their motivation will decrease. Their commitment will decrease. So refresh the ideology, refresh the ideology. The basic thought, the basic ideology, it must be refreshed every week. Surah Al-Fajr and Surah Al-Balad are another pair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-Fajr, wal-Ayal al-Ashr, wal-Shafi wal-Watr, wal-Layl iza yasr. Hal fi zalika qasam al-Zi hijr. Sadaq Allah al-Azim. As I said before also, this subject of the oaths of Qur'an is a very difficult subject. Somewhere, it's easy to understand what is muqsam dihi, what is muqsam alay. With what the oath is being taken, on, on what the oath is being taken. And there is a rational connection between the two. But at most of the other places, there are several, you know, interpretations and several meanings given by Mufassireen. But there are places where we can't say surely what is the exact meaning. Walfajr, by the dawn. Now I understand that as I said before, Wasubhe is a asfar. It denoted in Surah al the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beginning of the prophecy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Subh is a asfar. In the same way, I, I think that here also, the, it is being pointed in that direction by the dawn. Walayal in Ashur. And by the ten nights. Mostly people think these are the ten nights of Zul Hijjah. First ten days of Zul Hijjah. They are very sacred. Was Shafi Walwatr. By the even and the odd. Many sayings are there about the interpretation. Wallail is a yasr. And by the night when it departs, this again, as far as I think, denotes to the element of the Prophet, the night is departing. Wallail is adbar. Wasubhe is a asfar. So in the beginning, fajr, and in the end, wallail is a yasr. And then the night, by the night, when it departs. Halfi is alika qasabun lezi hijr. Is there not in that an oath for a man? Now, the historical events, only brief mentions of Qawmi'ad and Sabood and so on. Alam tara kaifa fa'ad rabbu kabi'ad. Didn't you see? What your Lord did with the nation of Ad? How he dealt with them? Iram Azat al Imad of Iram, having very high pillars. They say that Iram was the name of the city. Ad was the name of the nation. Iram was the city. And that is said generally Jannatul Shaddad. Shaddad was an emperor of Ad. And he has, you know, a city. He established a very beautiful, all gardens. And then on the ramparts there were very high pillars. So Iram Azat al that city of Iram, which had very high pillars. Allati lam yukhlaq misluha fil bilad. The like of whom were never created in the lands. That was for the first time. It must be at least 6,000 years from now. And there was some news that now this city has been seen under the desert. There are the remnants of the city present. Now because there are techniques with which they can see what is beneath the soil. Otherwise over it is a very bad desert. Nothing stands over there. Everything sinks into the, into the sand. Quick sands. أَلَمْ تَرَا كَيْفَ فَعَدَ رَبُّكَ بِعَادٍ إِرَمَزَاتِ الْحِمَادِ الَّتِي لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِسْدُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ وَسَمُودَ الَّذِينَ جَابُوا الصَّخْرَ بِالْوَادِ 
And did you see what your Lord did with Samud? Who carved the rocks in the valleys. They can be seen till today. In Hijr, about 100 miles northwest of Medina, there are, you know, in the mountains, they have carved big halls, big houses, palaces. They are still modules. But Fir'aun Adil Autad, and then you see how your Lord dealt with Fir'aun. The Fir'aun who had the ten pegs, you know, little Autad. So big an army, that with that army there used to be tents, and to erect the tents they needed pegs. So even the pegs were so great in number, that several hundred horses or camels were carrying the pegs only. So Fir'aun Azil Autad, this became his name. Al-Lazina Tawafil Bilad, those who transgressed in the lands. Now this Tughyani is in respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whosoever transgresses from the limits of obedience, because for jinns and humans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Whosoever rises above this level, so he is Tughyan, Taghut, الَّذِينَ تَغَوْفِ الْبِلَادِ فَأَكْسَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَادِ And as a result, they multiplied therein corruption and mischief. Now these are two dimensions. Tagha against Allah and fasad among the mankind. When you are transgressing against Allah, then you know there shall be oppressions, there will be killings, there will be all sorts of mischiefs and miscreants. So this is two aspects. Ibadullah, Hukukullah or Hukukul Ibad. Regarding Hukukullah, they transgressed. Regarding Hukukul Ibad, they created corruption and mischief in the land. فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ سَوْتَ عَزَابِ So your Lord, let loose on them the lashes of punishment. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِ الْمِرْسَادِ Verily your Lord is ever on the watch. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَبًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا These are the two central ayat of this surah and they give you the central theme of this surah. Before this, fourteen ayat, all small, small, small. After that also, then from seventeenth onwards, very small ayat. But these are long ayat, two. Formal insanu as for man. Izam abtalahu rabbuhu, whenever his Lord tries him, tests him, by honoring him and blessing him, he says, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا إِذَابَ بْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ He honors him and blesses him. Then he says, My Lord has honored me. وَأَمَّا إِذَابَ بْتَلَاهُ But when his Lord tries him and tests him, فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ and straighten the restricts for him his sustenance. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا Then he says, My Lord has humiliated me. What is wrong in it? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth, all the, you know, blessings of this world, if you say Allah has honored me, is it wrong? If you are poor and you know your needs are not fulfilled. If you say Allah has humiliated me, what's wrong in it? He is not attributing it to any other God, Allah. Allah has honored me, Allah has humiliated me. But what's the wrong? What's the mistake? The mistake is that if Allah gives you plenty, this is also a test, not honor. And if He gives you less, this is also a test, not humiliation. 
both conditions are equal in this respect. They are for testing. The honor will be on that day. Whosoever is honored on that day, he will be honored. Zalika yawmut tahabut. Allah will gather them. And that day will be. Zalika yawmut tahabut. So actually, to think that this is honor, this is wrong. If you are poor, you think you have been humiliated, this is wrong. Both conditions are equal. They are tests. Rather, they should be one step further. Now these are, you know, steps. Guidance and, you know, going on the wrong path, step by step. The highest Zallal Dalalam Baida would be, then if Allah has given you something and play and you know bless you, you say this is from Laat or Uzza or Manat. And when you are in trouble, you say that Khobal is perhaps angry from me. But this is the shirk. This is the worst, you know, thing that can a, a, a man can adopt. But you come lower down. Well, Allah has honored me. Allah has humiliated me. Comparing to that person, he is on a better place. That he is attributing honor or humiliation to Allah, not to any other God. But if he thinks that this in this world what is given to him is honor, and if there is poverty or something of that type, then it is humiliation. It is wrong. Neither the honor is honor nor humiliation is humiliation. Both are equal. But there is certain a, a further level of guidance. You may think that the testing by way of inflictions and sort of pain, this test is greater, harder than the test when he blesses, when he gives plenty. No. Real case is the reverse. When he, give, when he gives you plenty, you will tend to forget him. When you are in need, you will turn to him. So that examination, that test is worse than the test of poverty or pain. Because if you are, you know, enjoying life, rejoicing, everything in plenty, then you will forget Allah. If you are in pain, if you are afflicted by something, you will turn to Allah. And that is what happened with Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah. When you know from the government level, the idea of creativity of Quran, that Quran is also created. This aqidah was being enforced by the state, by government. And he stood up, I am not going to accept this. If you can produce some argument, some proof from the book of Allah or the sayings of his prophet, then I will say, if you can't produce any proof, I, I won't accept. He was beaten, beaten, beaten. They say he was beaten in a way that even if a element was beaten, elephant was beaten in that way, you know, that would have not been able to bear it. But he never wept. He took all the beatings. But then the conditions changed. Now the Khalifa, who took over from the former Khalifa, he believed in the same thing in which Ahmad ibn Hanbal believed. Now from the court of the Khalifa, a messenger came with some golden gold pieces, ashrafis, dinars, that this Khalifa has sent this for you as a gift, as a present. Now he wept. Oh Allah, I can't stand this test. This is harder. To be able to resist temptation is more difficult than to resist the persecution. So these are the three levels. 
فامل انسان و اذا ابتلاه ربه فاكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي اكرما نو اتس نوت دي اونر يو ار مستيكن واما اذا ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه ويقول ربي اهانا نو دي از نوت ہمليشن فالله نو نو نوت ات اول بل را بل لا تكرمون اليتيم بس يور كاركتر most of you have fallen down so much regarding morality that you don't honor the orphan this is the condition of the arabian society at that time they had gone so low generally speaking there were exceptions but generally la tukrimun al yatim wa la tahaduun ala ta'am al miskin and you do not urge others even to feed the needy and, and hungry wa taakuluna turas aqla lamma and you eat up all the inheritance with devouring greed don't let take anybody else anything else take all the inheritance this was the practice with them the older son he inherited everything nothing to even the younger sons nothing what to speak of daughters so taqurun turasa akla lamma wa tuhibun al mala hubban jamma and you love wealth with abounding love kalla certainly not iza dukkatil ardu dakkan dakka when the earth will be crushed into powder or when the earth will be beaten flat by continuous beating these are two translations done by two sons of shawariullah dehlvi Sharafuddin rahimahullah and Shah Abdul Qadir one has translated when the earth will be crushed into powder and the other when the earth will be beaten flat by continuous beating and beating and beating and beating so it becomes flat no mountains nothing of the sorts no heights no depths no oceans we have read that the seas will be flowed out and they will become dry so the whole earth will be one piece plain simple and stretched this we have already read in surah al-inshiqaq by the ardu muddat to be stretched so that it holds all the mankind at once standing before the lord because this will this is going to become the the ground where you know that reckoning and judgment will be passed by allah subhanahu wa taala but we say in persian qissa e zameen barsar e zameen this is the matter of this earth whatever we have earned working here living here so all the matters will be decided here so the next ayah is very important waja rabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will himself descend to this earth. We can't say how this descent will be. But this is it. Just as we have the hadith that every night in the small hours of the morning Allah comes down to the nearest heaven, samaa dunya. And then it is called hal min mustaghfirin taufir allah is there anybody asking for forgiveness so i should forgive him hal min sailin tawatiyahu is there someone requesting me something so that i should grant it to him now one step more every night he comes to the first heaven on that day he will descend further and he will come on this earth wa ja rabbuka and your lord and the angels rank upon rank wal malaku saffan saffa now this flattened earth allah subhanahu wa taala's descent the angels and all the humans from adam till the last man of his progeny which will come in this earth in this world till the end of this world 
Vajiya yawma yadhim bi jahannam. And then, the hell will be brought face to face with them. Yawma yadhim yata zakkarul insan. On that day, man will receive admonition. He will be reminded. He will come to his senses. Vanna lahu zikra. Now to what avail? He is coming to senses. He is getting the admonition. He is getting the reminding now. He is of no avail. فَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي He will say, would that I had forwarded some good for this life of mine. Now it will dawn upon him, this is the life. I thought that life in the, that world was the real life. That was only a preface to life. The real book of life has opened today. And alas, I sent nothing for this life. I kept working, 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 only for that life. The requirements or the facilities, conveniences, or luxuries of this life. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي فَيَوْمَ يَذِلْ لَا يُعَزِّرُ عَذَابَهُ أَحَدُ So none can chastise as he shall chastise on that day. وَلَا يُوسِقُ وَسَاقَهُ أَحَدُ And no one can bind anyone as he shall bind these disbelievers. They will be bound and chastised. In the end, these four small ayat are very heartening. And blessed are the souls to whom Allah will say these words. He can only pray that Allah includes us also. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutmainnah O you soul that remained at peace. Nafsa mutmainnah Nafsa lawwama in Surah Qiyamah. Nafsi Ammara in Surah to Yusuf. Nafsi Mutmainna. This is the highest spiritual station for the soul and spirit of man. And what is this Mithminan? Whether something good is coming to you or whether something which is unpleasant coming to you, you stand there like a rock. Not to be influenced by these changing conditions. Whatever is coming is coming from my Lord. And you are there, firm. So you are nafs mutmainna. The contented soul. The satisfied soul. The soul or spirit which is at peace with himself. To be at peace with yourself is also not an easy job. Repenting, what this happened, why happened, this should not have happened, what I did, I should not have done this. You are there, wavering this way, that way. But if you have accepted Allah as your Lord, whatever has come, it's from Him. Oh Allah, whatever you please is, I am ready. At least we should be like Hazrat Ismail when he said to his father Ibrahim, Satajaduni insha'Allah min as sabirin Oh father, go on, go ahead, do what you have been commanded to do. And God willing, you will find me forbearing, patient. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutmainna. Oh, the contented and satisfied soul, irjayla rabbike raziyatam mardiyya. Now return unto your Lord. Well pleased by your Lord, and well pleasing to your Lord. Your Lord is pleased with you, and you will be pleased with Him. Raziyatam mardiyya. And many times we find the verse, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه 
Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah. This will happen in, in the paradise or Jannah. But here also you should remain pleased with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides for you. No complaint. We read it in Surah Al-Taghabur. مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ يَا يَتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ تُرْجِعِي إِلَى رَبِّكِ غَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَّةً فَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي رَغُوْ and enter my bondsmen, my servants من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين now you will have the company of them Go and enter my garden, my paradise. Surah Al-Balad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأن تحل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد. Three ayats consisting of oaths. The fourth one is the statement on which these oaths have been taken. So understand first that fourth ayah. لَقَدْ خَنَقْلَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Verily we have created man in toil, hardships, sufferings. His life is full of hardships, sufferings. You know what happened to Mahatma Gautam Bud, he saw different forms of sufferings. A child dying and the parents standing and weeping, can't do anything. Why? Why is it so? A blind man falling down, why is it blind? Then he left his palace, wife, son. I must solve, you know, the riddle of this universe. What is this? Why this suffering? Sarvam Dukkham. This is the main idea of Buddhism. All is suffering, agony, pain. Ghalib says, Qaidhe hayat o bandhe gham asl mein dono ek hai. Maut se pehle aadmi gham se nijat paaye kyun? Life. Contains hardships and sufferings, agonies, pains. But the second stage we have read already in Shikaq. After suffering here, then you will be standing before your Lord also. The animals they suffer here, yes, but they don't, they will never be questioned before their Lord. But this is the tragedy of mankind. Now the oaths on this. La uksimu bihaz al-balad. Verily, I swear by this city. That is Makkah. Makkah was hard for living. No vegetation. Nothing grew over there. The wadin ghair is izar. Not an easy or pleasant place to live. Wa anta hillum bihaz al-balad. Over and above that, and you, O Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you are a dweller in this city, and you will be permissible in this city. What does it mean? Number one, that people are persecuting you here. First of all, this city is hard to live. Then now you are having the hardship because these disbelievers, they are opposing you. They are calling you names. They are saying you have gone mad. So this is another toil, another suffering, another dimension of suffering. And the other meaning is that you will be permissible. One day will come and that is the victory of Makkah when you will be allowed to make warfare in this city. Otherwise, it is forbidden city. This is Baladul Haram. No fighting here. 
And this was the tradition of the Arabs. That even if a person was searching for the killer, murderer of his father for years together, I couldn't find him. But then he saw him in Makkah, in Haram. But he won't say anything to him. Don't do any harm. He is in Makkah. He is Baladul Amin, Baladul Haram. But one day will be for you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This man will be lifted. Your struggle will reach that place. Thirteen or fourteen persons were killed on the day of the victory of Makkah. Wawalidin wa mawalid. And another manifestation of this toil and hardship. The begotter and the begotten. Now father has to look after the child. To provide for the child. This is not an easy job. Rearing the children. Bring them up. Hardship. Hardship over hardship. Hardship over hardship. Lakad khalak mal insana fi kabad. We have created man in hardship and toil. Does he think that nobody will be able to have power over him? And he says boastingly, Well, I squandered abundant wealth in charity. They used to boast. I fed so many people. I helped so many people. Ayahsabu Allam Yarahu Ahad. Does he think that nobody observed him? If he was doing for Allah, so Allah is seeing. He has, he has seen. No use saying it. But if it was to show off to the people, then you will have no reward from Allah. Simple. Yakulu Ahlak Tumalan Lobada. Now the blessings on man. Alam Najallahu Ayanain. Didn't we give him two eyes to see? The Lisanam was Shafatain. And a tongue and two lips, with the help of which you speak. And we guided him to the two highways. Now the interpretation of these two highways is number one. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put, as we shall find in the next surah, the knowledge of good and evil is inherent in human souls. So as if Allah has already guided them. This way is wrong, this way is correct. This is good, this is bad. Telling a lie is bad. Speaking the truth is good. Everybody knows. Fulfilling the promise is good. Going back on their promise, bad. To be respectful to your parents, good. To be disrespectful, bad. Who doesn't know it? So we have already guided him to the two highways. But another interpretation is that the breasts of the mother the child is born, baby, knows nothing. But as if some had taught him, someone, that your food is there in the breast of your mother. Go and suck it. Nobody has to train him. If that training was not already given to him, how, how would you feed that, child, that baby? So this is the other interpretation, and I prefer this interpretation. Despite our blessings, man has not been able to cross the narrow valley, which is very high. Aqaba. In high mountains, narrow valleys, man didn't cross them. What do you mean by that? Desolation is coming. In the following ayat. What is that? Mabadraka balakawa. Do you know? What will make you understand what is this? Akaba. What is this narrow valley at the height? Fakkur akaba. Freeing of a slave. You set a slave free. Service to mankind. 
sympathy with your human fellow beings, to be able to spend your money, to relieve your fellow beings from pain and suffering. This is the, the narrow bottleneck which man, due to his miserliness, niggardliness, singleness, he can't cross, due to love of wealth. فَكْوَ رَقَبَتٍ أَوْ اِتْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَسْغَبَتٍ Or feeding on a day of hunger, when there is famine, when there is drought, and if you have some store of grain, some stock, normally you would li like to keep it. But whosoever can share this with the fellow beings, although he sees that maybe he will need it tomorrow. But no. Etamun fi yomin zi masraba. Yatiman za makraba. An orphan who is also a relative. Krabadar. Who is a kin. Au miskinan za matraba. Or a needy man lying in the dust. This is the narrow valley which you cross. That is, you have let loose the brake. The love for wealth is the brake. Your car cannot go. You are pushing the accelerator. But the brake is there. Your car cannot move. So whatever you try, you cannot be a righteous person unless you are relieved of this love for wealth. And this subject we have read in, in detail in Surah Al-Hadith. اعلموا ان الله يحيي الارض بعد موتها قد بينا لكم الايات لعلكم تعقلون ان المصدقين والمصدقات واقرض الله قرضا حسنا يضاعف لهم ولهم اجر كريم والذين امنوا بالله ورسله those who pass this narrow bottleneck and then they have faith then you know their character their moral character it will go up and up and up. But you have to open the break first, and that break is the love of wealth. When you have passed this, through this narrow valley, summa kana min al amanu wa tawaswa bil sabri wa tawaswa bil mahaba. And then you join those people who have faith, who believe, and who exhort each other for patience, and exhort each other for compassion. Now this is Surah Al-Asr written over here. Wal-Asr, inna l-insana lafi khusr, illa l-lazeena amanu wa abil salihati wa tawaswa bil haqti wa tawaswa bil sabr. The only difference is, amal salihat has been taken first. Freeing a slave, feeding the hungry, this is amal salih. In Surah Al-Asr, iman, then amal salih. Then Tawasi will help, then Tawasi will suffer. Here the sequence is different. The, ahem, the most important amal is Saleh. Sympathy for your fellow beings. Fakku raqabatin au itamun fi yawmin zi masrabatin. Yatiman za makrabatin au miskinan za matraba. Mentioned here. Now you join that band, that group, that Hezbollah, who has faith, and they exhort each other. Sab for sabr and marhaba. Ulaika sabul maimana. These are the people to whom their records will be handed over in their right hands. Waladina kafaru biayatina. As for those who belie our revelations, whom ashabul mashrama. They are the people to whom their record will be handed over in their left hands. Alayhim narum musada. They will be in the fire, but the fire will be vaulted over, closed from up, upside. You know, if there is an oven and it is closed from above, then all the heat is within. If there is some opening, then heat goes out also. But closed, muqsada. Alayhim naru muqsada. Now let me give you an introduction. Two pairs 
of two surahs each going to make a chahar surah a collection of four surahs chahar surah of noor and zulmat light and darkness there are opposites in this universe good bad height and low all these things contradictions but with these contradictions this universe is working and without these contradictions there would be no working of this universe but there is another contradiction and that is within you the urge to do good and the urge to do bad evil both are within you you have the nafs amara which is urging you for something bad in the nafs amara tum bisu you have that spirit it wants to pull you up towards your lord so this noor and zulma light and darkness as they are opposed to each other in the same way good and evil they are opposed to each other so in these surahs you will find in the first eight ayat consist of oaths and very small you know statement on which this oath has been taken in the next surah there will be three ayat for oaths and then on what the oath is taken it is detailed somewhat then the third is surah ad-duha the highest level to which a human can rise and that is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking to him personally at a absolutely personal level surah ad-duha and surah al-insira these four surahs very beautiful very important and the subject gradually develops as if you know there is a flower bud it has not exfoliated the petals are there in that bud but they are not visible when this flower opens up this bud now the petals are visible so you will find you know the gist the essence in the first sura that is surah ash-shams then it will open up it will be explained dilated upon in surah al-lail and then it reaches its zenit in surah ad-duha and surah al-insira bismillahir rahmanir rahim wash-shams wa duhaha by the sun and its brightness wal qamar idha tanaha and by the day and by the moon when it follows the sun tala yatlu means to follow this tilawa tilawatul quran this word is derived from this root in reading quran we follow with the text and some of the people you know they move their fingers along with the text you might have seen so it's a following you are following the text but the exact literal meaning of tala yatlu is to follow someone by the sun and its brightness and by the moon when it follows the sun wa nahar idha jallaha and by the day when it reveals the sun as if day has shown us the sun wa layl idha yakhsha and by the night when it enshrouds the sun covers the sun sun is gone not visible wa samaa wa ma banaha and by the heaven and as he created it built it or by him who has created it these are two ways of translating this ma wa sama and by the heaven wa ma banaha and the way allah has created it or by him who has created it wal ard wa ma tahaha and by the soul by the earth and by him who created it spread it or by the earth and as it has been spread wa nafsin wa ma sawaha and by the human soul 
And as he has finished it, created it, finished it, given him the finishing touches. These are the eight ayat. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Then he has inspired in it, in the soul, human soul, with the consciousness of the wickedness and piety. This human soul is not blind. It sees. This is right, this is wrong. This is good, this is bad. The basic moral values are inherent in human spirit, human soul. Man knows by his very nature, this is good, this is bad. This is evil, this is good. Now what is the statement on which these eight oaths have been taken? Now, if there are differences, there will be different ends also. All these oaths are on this statement. Successful will be only who? That who purifies this nafs. And whosoever buries it, dasaha, whosoever buries it in the dust, he is a failure, he is doomed. This ayah has first once more come in Surah Al-Ala, Sabbihisma Rabbika Al-Ala, Qad aflaha man tazakta, Qad aflaha man tazakta, half of this statement was there. But here this statement, if you see the day and the night, if you see the sun and the moon, if you see the sky and the earth, if you are seeing all these things different, so the end will be different. If the good and evil are different, then you know there are going to be two goals, two ends. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. Definitely successful will be one who purifies his soul. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا دَسَّا يَدُسْسُ We had read it, that a Bedouin when it was told to him that a daughter had been born, then he kept on thinking, should I keep her despite all this humiliation, or I should go and bury him in the dust, in the sand. That is دَسَّاهَا I told you, if this nafs has not been purified, if this kid and libido has overwhelmed it, what does it mean? As if this soul or spirit is dead and buried in this grave. Now this body of mine is a grave for this soul. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Now this happens at the individual level and this happens also at the collective level. So collective level is mentioned in the remaining five ayat of this surah which we shall take, inshallah, tomorrow. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakeem. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, 
inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at T-A-N-Z-E-E-M dot U-S or call our toll-free number 866-779-I-O-N-A. Join us. Together we can make a difference.